finishing up uh, mixed hearing losses is when you have a conductive hearing loss with the sensory neural hearing loss. A progressive hearing loss is a hearing loss that gets worse over time. So you could look at previous um, audiograms and see the direction that things are headed in. A functional hearing loss is when everything is normal, but the child, you know, pretends or exaggerates to have a hearing loss. And the child might do this as a call for help or a bid for attention, a poor performance at school. So, you know, they get called down to the nurse's office and they, let's say, aren't paying attention and they fail their screen and then they get to come down again a week later for another hearing test and then... They're smart and they figure it out like, oh, if I keep pretending to have a hearing loss, then I get out of class and then, you know, my mom's going to take me to the doctor and then to take me out to ice cream. So there might be some other issues going on. For an audiologist that identifies this, it's appropriate for her to speak to the parent and the other family members and, you know, if need be, mom refer out for psychological counseling. You never want to accuse a child of faking anything. So your best bet with this is to say that, um, you know, there are discrepancies in your tests. You know, the computer says you can hear okay. Maybe I did something wrong. Let's try again. And you give the child an out. Auditory processing disorder is um, also controversial. It has something to do with the brain. And um, in my opinion, um, there's so much that has to go on in the brain for a child to learn. And there's so little that we know about the brain. So it depends, you know, sometimes there's a turf war where audiologists will see a child first and they'll say, oh, they have auditory processing disorder. Or a psychologist will see the child and say, oh, no, they have ADHD. Or a speech pathologist will see the child and they'll say, oh, they have, you know, specific language impairment. Or reading specialists will say they have dyslexia. What we do know is that these kids need extra help. They need extra support. They need extra services. So children with auditory processing disorder are supposed to have a hard time concentrating in noise. So they're, they can't pull out the speech from noise. So they might have normal audiograms, but um, different speech tests that get pretty complicated, they have trouble with. So... What do you recommend? Do you recommend that they get um, preferential seating? And that works for every child, right? Or extra time or more support, clearer notes. All children benefit from these things, though. So if you understand what I'm saying um, with auditory processing disorder versus other disorders, the point is every kid needs an FM system. They need you know, extra support with their homework, extra time to read, a quiet environment, you know, we should all be working as a team to help these children instead of fighting over what diagnosis is what. There are um, synergistic or multifactorial effects. So let's say low birth weight puts a child in an incubator, um, but some of the noise gets loud and then that affects the child's hearing. Auditory neuropathy and auditory dyssynchrony is a disorder of the auditory neural system, including the eighth cranial nerve. But the outer hair cells are functioning normally. So these children will pass their OAE screen. They'll pass their newborn hearing screen on OAE. So the cochlea will be functioning normally, but there's something later on that is dyssynchronous that is not sending the message to the brain. It's out of sync. So they might do poor on their ABR or they'll have fluctuating audiograms. Sometimes they'll do well, sometimes they won't. Hearing aids don't help these kids because their outer hair cells are okay, but what has been shown to help them are cochlear implants. So um, a cochlear implant might help to sync the brain and help the child better understand speech, especially speech and noise. You need to do a full ABR. All babies in the NICU should be screened with an ABR, not just an OAE. OAEs are great, but um, they only test the cochlea, and this is an example why it's sometimes important to test beyond the cochlea. So we want early identification, family-focused intervention, watchful waiting, 
Hearing aids don't really work as much, and uh, cochlear implants, something about them, seem to sync it all together. The treatment might still be controversial.